Jennifer Cody Epstein's 2008 novel, The Painter from Shanghai, delves into the fictionalized biography of Pan Yu Liang, China's renowned post-impressionist painter, who emerged from a life of poverty and prostitution. The story primarily unfolds in early 20th century China, exploring Yu Liang's formative years in a repressive environment that tests her creativity and artistic talent. However, while the novel has received some praise, critics argue that Epstein's approach does not fully capture Yu Liang's art and brilliance. Lauren Groff, in a review, suggests that the descriptions of Yu Liang's paintings lack specificity, leaving readers unable to envision her works fully. Furthermore, the novel adopts a straightforward realism, which some critics feel does not do justice to Yu Liang's bold and calligraphic post-impressionism. The narrative begins with a prologue set in 1957, where the 62-year-old Yu Liang, now a moderately successful painter, contemplates whether her art has lost its relevance in the face of new trends in the art market. She ponders the shift in preferences, as people seem to crave abstract and expressive artworks over traditional figurative representations. The novel then transports us back to 1901 when Yu Liang, then known as Chen Xiuqing, tragically loses both her parents and is taken in by her scholarly but drug-addicted uncle, Wu Ding. He recognizes her talent for using colors while embroidering and introduces her to poetry, defying societal norms that limit women's education. However, when Yu Liang is just 14, her uncle, consumed by his opium addiction, sells her into prostitution to support his habit. Amidst the harrowing depths of despair within the brothel, where brutality and tragedy reign, Yu Liang's unique perception of colors persists. For three years, she does whatever it takes to please her clients, eventually earning the position of top girl. However, a stroke of luck befalls her when one of her clients, the forward-thinking customs inspector Pan Zanhua, recognizes her intellect and spirit. Zanhua, an idealistic follower of Sun Yat-sen, bonds with Yu Liang over poetry and decides to buy her freedom. Despite already having a family, he marries her in a bigamous ceremony, and they relocate to Shanghai. In the bustling city, Yu Liang discovers the true significance of her affinity for visual art. Against all odds, she gains admission to the Art Academy in 1920, becoming one of the very few female artists. There, she encounters like-minded companions, such as Jean Ling, a fellow female artist whose talent and beauty captivate Yu Liang, and Xing Shuduan, who believes that art should serve political causes, aligning himself with the rising Chinese Communist Party. As Yu Liang's talent flourishes, it creates a rift between her and Zanhua, who gives her an ultimatum to choose between her passion for art and her love for him. Heartbroken, Yu Liang departs for Paris in 1925 after securing a scholarship to study there, determined to pursue her dreams. In the enchanting city, despite Zanhua's financial support, she grapples with poverty, loneliness, and cultural differences. Nonetheless, she finds her artistic voice, focusing on portraiture, often using herself as a subject, sometimes in the nude. The novel glosses over the years Yu Liang spends honing her craft in Rome after winning another prestigious scholarship, jumping forward to 1936. Pan Yu Liang returns to Shanghai and Nanjing, intending to stage a triumphant comeback exhibition. However, her artwork, which includes nudes, faces harsh criticism and vandalism due to conservative sentiments in China at the time. The public deems her paintings too Western, and the scandal surrounding her art becomes a significant obstacle. A year later, unable to find acceptance in her homeland, Yu Liang decides to leave China for good and returns to Paris. However, the novel provides little detail about her life there, skipping over events that were professionally and personally important to her. Critics point out that significant moments, such as becoming one of the few female teachers of color at the École de Beaux-Arts or her experiences living through World War II in France, are barely explored. The novel concludes in 1977 with Yu Liang's death, leaving behind an impressive legacy of 4,000 works of art. I hope you enjoyed this video, leave a like if you did, and be sure to subscribe thank you.